from the dealership here, if you'd like to stand, Brett, hands are already standing, they are co-hosts, um, thanks to all of you for taking time out of your family time and your other evening time that you might be doing something else, but we're hoping you get a lot out of this. It's been great fun having Hilda in town for a couple of days. I've known Hilda for almost 10 years and um, I feel really blessed to have you here and to be able to share her stories with you as well. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Alan Almassey. Alan is our a and director out of Chicago. And basically, I've been reporting to Alan for almost oh, 10 I years. <laughs> so, um, and he and Hilda have been doing this all over the country. But when I say all over the country, truly only a few cities. We're really blessed that Minneapolis is only one of a handful of cities that's been able to host the event. So you've been able to carry the torch with Hilda. So with that, I'll turn it over to you so you can introduce Hilda. Perfect. The the Thank tales. you. So, and, you know, as Robin said, this the, the tour is called Tales of a Classic. Hilda is uh, our classic. You might want to move there so you can see the screen. No, I can see it. I will. You can't. Yeah, you really need to see the screen. So, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> yes. As I said, Hilda is our classic. I can you see the screen? <laughs> Otherwise, you lose half of the. So, so what any, Alan has to say, anyway. So, in any event, the uh, Tales of a Classic, we've been s slowly working our way uh, to the West Coast. You're doing LA and San Francisco next, but you've hit your hometown of New York, you've done Chicago, you've done DC, Houston, Boston, Dallas. Uh, Dallas. So, so, we're hitting probably the top dozen cities in in the United States with, uh, with Tales of a Classic. And this is something that, uh, that Herman Miller very much wanted to bring to you. Uh, Hilda spent 20 years uh, working in the uh, Nelson Design Office in New York City, and then came to Herman Miller where she spent 35 years working for us. And she is, she is filled with uh, many memorable tales. The way tonight's program works is uh, it's a Q&A session. So I'll feed Hilda a question, and, uh, and she'll answer it for or all not. of you. Or, or not. <laughs> and, uh, and there's somewhat of a logical sequence that this flows through. One of the fun things I've learned about doing this with Hilda is no, no event is like the next because... DJ Dupree was the founding father of Herman Miller. And, um, he had read about George in Life magazine. George was the editor of Fortune in Life magazine. George was less a designer than he was a philosopher, a writer, an incredible speaker. He had written um, in Life magazine about a storage wall. Uh, that was his own concept. And DJ saw it and asked to meet with him. Gilbert Rohde had died. Gilbert Rohde had already started the transition from gingerbread to modern. So he asked George to come to Michigan and uh, liked him and suggested that he come on board as director of design. And George said, I don't know anything about furniture. I, I really don't think I'm your man. And I think you should look elsewhere. So George came back to New York and uh, DJ interviewed several other more uh, probable designers, didn't like any of them, came back to George and said, we really want you. And that was the beginning of an incredible relationship. I don't think there was ever a formal contract, uh, to my knowledge. Um, I think it was a handshake. And the relationship um, with George and Herman Miller went on for 35 years? 45 until 45. 1986. So. so it was a love story. Many, many years later, when uh, Warhol became famous, we were then in a brownstone that we had bought that housed the Nelson residence above and the shop below. The files were all in the basement, and Andrew, Andy, had become very famous, and his stuff was very valuable, so I decided I would find them. 
And I decided to, if I found them, that I would be gone. And I would <laughs> leave George and become wealthy in my own right. So I spent two days in the basement going through every file. Ernest threw them out. Six months later, George, the light went off in George's head, and he said, by the way, what happened to those uh, Warhol renderings? And I said, I knew you were going to ask me that. I went through the, all the files in the basement. Ernest threw them out. I just wonder, his secretary, a Warhol secretary of 40 years, just found some in her uh, closet. And it hit the papers. She had no idea what they were worth. Well, they sold them at Sotheby's for a lot of money. So I have no idea how much they would have been worth, but probably a lot of money. I'm so and so I'm still working for a living. <laughs> so one, one day we got a, a big box of foam, and each piece was uh, looked like a marshmallow. It was white. And so the designers decided to play around with it as a joke. So they were playing around with it, and Irving said, well, why don't we make a frame for it? This was all for fun. Well, Hugh Dupree came to town, and we had put this together. And he saw it, and he said, what's that? And we told him it's just for fun. And he goes, you know, I like that. Why don't we put it in the product? Uh, vocabulary. So that's how that evolved. It was absolutely a silly joke. So they started manufacturing in 56. We must have sell, sold all of 10, and we took it off the market. So that's the story. Now here's a photo of you on the marshmallows. This was 1956. How did you end up as the the model for the uh, Nelson Well, Center. I was then still the receptionist, and um, we had no money. George was took advantage of everything he could possibly. <laughs> and I was young, I was pretty, I was photogenic, and I was free. So I became his muse. And so I became the woman on the marshmallow sofa. And subsequently, whenever they had a prototype that they wanted to take pictures of, I sat in it. Now, in 1999, mm -hmm. uh, I was with Herman Miller, of course, and they decided to bring it back. And one of our marketing people was inspired by doing the before and after, and it became one of the most successful um, campaigns.